Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. It's great to see all of you again. Before this fiscal year began on July 1st, we gathered in this room to warn of the continued consequences of the state moving into fiscal 16 without a budget in place. I warned that the situation would become more dire the longer this went on. Sadly, every day we see hardship grow throughout our state because Illinois does not have a budget in place. The devastation is well documented. Nonprofit and social service organizations have exhausted their credit lines, slashed staff and services, and some have shut their doors. Payments for mental health, sexual assault, autism, respite care, and other services are not being made, jeopardizing critical care to those who are most vulnerable in our state. Our state colleges and universities are not being paid, endangering staffing and services and causing untold damage to future recruiting and enrollment numbers. Our office is doing everything we can under the law to make payments wherever possible, from working directly with vendors to assess hardships to expediting payments. But in many instances, there is just no mechanism to make a payment. And in short, there is really simply no substitute for an appropriated, balanced budget. So today, I am here to warn again that as catastrophic as the ongoing hardship has been for our state, the long-term financial implications of this impasse pose an equally daunting threat to our businesses, our taxpayers, and our social service organizations. As I have pointed out before, in the absence of a budget, the courts have stepped in, so the state is paying bills under more than a dozen court orders and consent decrees and various statutory appropriations. In fact, we estimate at this point we are paying about 90% of the state's bills that were covered under last year's budget. Some of those orders require us to pay based on fiscal 15 funding levels. But in other cases, the courts have mandated that we pay whatever is required to maintain existing service levels, regardless of what that cost is. As a result of those orders, we expect that the state this year will exceed last year's appropriations for the Departments of Human Services and the Department of Health Care and Family Services by an estimated $1.2 billion. At the same time, Revenues are expected to be down $5 billion as a result of the uh, sunset of last year's temporary tax increase. So when you put all this together, it means that we are on a pace to dig ourselves $6.2 billion in the hole further into debt uh, this year alone. That is $6.2 billion more in debt for a state that already had billions of dollars in backlog bills waiting to be paid. Now, the situation when we have a budget in place is a little like a credit card. You can spend until you hit your limit. But in this case, the courts have essentially removed that limit, that cap. And the state has blown through it with an estimated $1.2 billion more in spending while bringing in $5 billion less. Now, as the chief fiscal officer for the state, I feel like I'm pretty good at numbers. But I think even these numbers are so large, they are really hard to wrap your mind around how big $6.2 billion really is. It's an incredible amount of money. In fact, if you had $6.2 billion, you could buy both of this year's Super Bowl teams. You could buy the Willis Tower. You could buy a trip to the moon and back. In fact, you could buy all of these things, and you would still have money left over. The bottom line is that the state cannot go bankrupt and that we cannot print money. Taxpayers are going to have to pay this bill. Now, to be clear, much of the, the um, funding that has been ordered by the court, much of the spending is critical. It includes payments to Medicaid and human services that serve the aged, blind, and disabled, temporary assistance to needy families. But without a budget, the spending is open-ended. As a result, in the coming months, we will see our state's bill backlog, which currently stands at about $7 billion today, continue to grow. And that means that hospitals, businesses, social service providers will wait even longer for the payments that they're expecting from the state. The long-term ramifications for the state are even more concerning. 
because by spending more as we bring in billions less, we are making it even more difficult for our state to create a pathway that will allow us to regain our fiscal footing and, and keep our promises to fund education, social services, public safety, and infrastructure in the future. So what is the answer? Clearly, Illinois must pass a budget, and we must reclaim our controls over spending and revenue. We must stop the financial bleeding and start healing. Now, given the back and forth over these past many months, I think it would be understandable for some to doubt whether or not we could actually get together and get a budget in place. But we know from experience it's possible. The governor and the General Assembly successfully moved legislation to fund general state aid payments. In recent weeks, they have come together to fund domestic violence shelters, local governments, 911 call centers, and the lottery. And just last week, the Senate President and Governor found common ground on critical pension reform. Now it's really time to build on that momentum. It's time to set aside our differences that would have been all too apparent over these past many months and reach an agreement that will allow Illinois to move past this budget impasse so that we can keep our promises to taxpayers and businesses for years to come. Now, I'm an optimist. Uh, I believe we can get this done, and I will tell you my office stands ready to provide any information, any resources to all involved so we can work together, get an agreement in place, pass a balanced budget, and move Illinois forward. Thank you very much, and now I'm happy to answer any questions. We currently have $7 billion right now in-house in unpaid bills. Um, the concern is that we are now spending uh, past what we had in fiscal 15 because of no limits on um, these court orders. So we are expecting to be $1.2 billion higher in spending than we were in fiscal 15. Fiscal 15 had $5 billion more in revenue because we had a temporary tax increase in place for half the year. So that total is $6.2 billion. When we look at the year in total and we add on what we currently have in backlog bills, we will probably be somewhere between 10 and $12 billion uh, in debt somewhere around the end of the fiscal year, uh, considering for the lapse period. Would that be a record? Uh, I believe the Quinn level was at about 10, so it would be right in there with that level. I believe that the solution to this budget, um, to getting on a path to get out of this, is going to require three things. Uh, first, they all need to get together, uh, and, and we need to stop blaming each other uh, and focus on solutions. I will tell you that the decades, the, the problems that we have today are making. Uh, they did not just start in this past year. And so everyone has to get together, put the people in the state first, and work on a solution. I believe the solution will have to include uh, some re some cuts in, uh, in our government. I will tell you that in my own office, I cut my budget 10 percent last year. In fiscal 15, I turned back a million dollars to taxpayers. I did it by doing nothing drastic. We should be doing this all throughout our government, looking for ways to be more efficient, more lean, and get excess costs out of our government. Um, I do, I'm still answering the question, I do believe that um, we are going to have to need, look at revenue um, improvements, although I will tell you that if we solve this problem on revenue alone, we will, have, we will be looking at raising our tax rate in Illinois from 3.75% up to somewhere between 7 and 8%. It's more, it'll have to double what we are now to get out of the debt we have. I don't know any legislator who would vote for that, and I don't know many businesses that would stay in Illinois for that. And so as a result, we must look at some reforms 
uh, some that will help our businesses be more competitive so they can absorb some increase in, in um, taxes and still put people back to work and bring jobs. I am not part of the legislature. I'm not part of that meeting. I'm not going to speculate on what exactly they have to do, but they all have to get together and sure. get a budget sure. in place. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a fr frequently pe people ask me about running out of money. We we will never really run out of money in the state uh, because every day we get more revenue in as a result of um, fees and taxes. You know now we're moving into a period where income taxes are coming in, so we're, our revenues are actually um, come in every single day. But I will tell you that with seven plus billion dollars in bills that we cannot pay. Every single day we run out of money. We, we pay as much as we can on that given day, and then we, we have to wait till the next day. So when we make decisions about how to pay our bills, we are looking at today do we pay foster care or do we send the education payment or do we pay for the developmentally disabled because we can't pay it all in the same day. Um, so I, I think, honestly, I, I've used an example before. We have $7 billion in debt in a normal business day. Uh, we have about $100 million to pay our bills with, not even counting our pension, uh, unfunded un, um, pension liabilities and the part of the state we're not funding. But it would be like looking, if you took six zeros off of all those numbers, it would be like looking in your checkbook, seeing $100 and having $7,000 worth of bills on your kitchen table and, and trying to decide what are you going to pay today. Um, I might have to get some of my staff involved here, but on air, when I took, when I was sworn in in January last year, we had about eight billion dollars in bills, and we were looking at uh, four to five months uh, waiting for payment. We now have seven billion dollars of bills only through the first half of the year, uh, and we are, I think, looking at another three to four months. Uh, we're about three to four months behind in payment. There are some organizations that have not been paid since March uh, because they, the appropriation, uh, what their spending was for last year was not fully funded, and then this year we have no budget and no mechanism to pay them. The best example of that are um, some of the medical care providers who are waiting months and months for, you know, really, have not really been paid at all. Uh, I would imagine we'd probably get up to five to six months. Uh, we'll get a, a more distinct, a more definitive answer, but it just it just adds to the amount of time. Yes. Uh, I don't talk to the governor specifically about this personally. Our staffs talk frequently, uh, and we are in constant communication with the governor's budget director. I talk to all legislators about this uh, whenever I see them. I have not been um, specifically talking with um, leaders from a specific party. One more question? What's the situation with the pension payment? Yes, just to clarify, we did not miss it. We delayed it. Um, uh, in past, comptrollers have actually saved up those pension payments and made them all at the very end of the fiscal year. We've been working very hard to pay them monthly. Uh, we hit a situation in November where we had to make one of those decisions. What do we pay? Do we pay education? Do we pay foster care? Do we pay developmentally disabled? Or do we contribute, make our contribution to the pension fund? We delayed that contribution. Uh, we will be making it up in April, well before the end of the fiscal year. We have made every other payment on time so far uh, since then. Thank you. Given, given, Thank the, you given the financial gravity of the, of the state situation right now, would it maybe behoove the leadership to put aside non-financial things such as court reform or remap reform or single member districts and instead just focus on a budget? We have to get everybody in a room talking and focusing on a budget. They all have to, sh they all have to go in there with the attitude of solving the problem. I, you know, there are a lot of things in these reforms. Um, some of them, honestly, uh, despite what is sometimes said, some of them have financial ramifications to our state. And um, 
should be on the table to help the total solution. I believe if, if people get in a room and put the state and the people of Illinois first, we will find ways to find common ground and get enough done that we can get a budget put in place. Thank, Thank you. you.